Hello and welcome to the Tournament Center here at the Magic the Gathering World Championships at PAX in Seattle. I'm Brian David Marshall and I am joined by deck builder extraordinaire Sam Black. And we're about to look at a pretty saucy little number that you brought to compete in the standard rounds here. Uh, tell us a little bit about the origins of this deck because I know I got to see it in action last weekend yep. during the WMCQ. Yep, exactly. I first heard about it from uh, Craig Wesco who got it from uh, someone I think he knows named uh, Justin Heilig. Um, who built it, and uh, he, Justin and Craig and some other people were working on it on a Facebook group separate from our team that they built just to talk about this deck. They had a bunch of guys who were just really into this deck. Um, <laughs> like, really into In this deck. In a way deck. that like, perhaps is a little bit bewildering to you. I mean, it, like, yeah, like, Craig's like, oh yeah, we've been, like, when, so as soon as I saw that Craig top aided the uh, event with like this deck that he'd posted in our forums, he's like, hey, I'm going to play this just so you guys know. And then like as soon as I saw he top aided, I was like, okay, I should try this. Fire it up, play some games with it. I'm like, yeah, Craig, I've started testing it. And he's like, uh, great, do you want me to add you to like this other like group that I'm on where we've been talking about the deck? I'm like, okay, sure. And it's just like thread after thread of talking about like every possible card and going through all their sideboard plans. And it's just like these guys are just like, I've never, like I don't know most of them, and they're just like going real deep on the it. The way you explained to me, people good. were like, "You're gonna love this deck; it's so <laughs> oh, much fun." They were and, very enthusiastic, and you're like, "I don't care; I just want to know if it's good." <laughs> so let's take a look at the deck we're talking about. It is Mono White Devotion. Yeah. Uh, here are some of the new cards from Magic 2015 that are in the deck. Talk us through, starting with four copies of Archangel of Time. Yeah, from Origins. Um, Archangel is the card that deck is built around. Uh, like, you have to be a base white deck to play that. Um, yeah, and, white, white, uh, white. I mean, it was absolutely the star of the match I just played. Uh, played against Goblins as soon as I cast it. Martin just couldn't do anything. Um, it's 3-5 uh, is perfect numbers. Lives through Elspeth, lives through Stoke the Flames. Uh, it just beats, like, it, it, I mean, it's lives bad through against... Lives language. Yeah, it lives through language. language. It's bad against, like, Ojutai and nothing else. Um, okay. Yeah, outstanding. Hangerback Walker, good in every deck is what I'm getting? That's more or less what's going on there, yeah. Uh, this deck, so the thing, like, the big secret with this deck, like, the thing that, like, is not obvious but is really going on is this next card, Knight of the White Orchid. The deck makes much, like, makes really subtly great use of Knight of the White Orchid in addition to just, like, oh, yeah, it's a mono white deck, Knight of the White Orchid's a great card. The deck has, like a really low curve with a lot of stuff that it can do on turn two so that you can uh, spend your turn two casting a non Knight of the Warrior Orchid two drop and wait until your opponent plays a third land. Even if you're on the play sometimes, you'll just go like two drop, two drop, sit on a land, just wait for your opponent to play a third land and then play Knight and then play another land. And then it gets you to your angels and your rocks and activating Master of the Unseen. The deck is really good at playing on a little bit of mana and then exploding in the late game and having a lot of mana sinks. It uses Knight of the White Orchid in a way that just like other decks can't come close to. Uh, Kithian, Hero of Akros? Uh, it's a playable one drop. Um, it, like, I, I, was, I was hoping that it would be more than that, but it's a playable one drop. That's what it's doing in the deck. Every now and then it becomes Gideon. Every now and then it's the late game and you just like ha have an indestructible blocker. But I mean, really it's just when you're trying to like, when you're playing all planes and you have untapped mana on turn one, you might as well do something with it and give him something to do. And you talked about the idea of playing a two drop on turn two so you don't have to play your Night yeah. of the White Orchid. Kithian can substitute for a two drop even though it costs yeah. one. Yeah, and I mean, just like every now and then you just get an aggressive draw and kill someone. Like, for the most part, you're like a mid range or control deck, but like against, uh, you know, an actual control deck, you really want to just be able to go like two drop or two power guy, two power guy, attack you. All right, let's talk about some of the that. other cards that make this deck work. Uh, you see Anna Fenza, Kintree Spirit, and uh, Brimaz, King of Arescos, uh, and Wingmate Rock, cards that we haven't seen as much yep. for a while. And, and Soldier especially. Soldier yeah. is a card that was a Pro Tour top eight fixture for a little while, <laughs> yeah. and it's kind of gone away. Yeah. Well, what's going on with this set well, of creatures? So, I mean, Soldier of the Pantheon has some issues with like goblin tokens, and just like two ones were really bad for a long time. Doesn't attack into Karyat, and doesn't attack into Corsair. Um, but this deck... I mean, it just really wants white one drops, and also like it's so good against red because of these new cards, uh, Hanger Backwalker and Archangel, that you can afford to have a card that doesn't fight goblins well. Um, and Anafenza also just works well with it, lets it get big enough to like attack into um, Karyatids. Uh, and so with the, I mean, with these legends, with uh, Kithian and Anafenza, um, 
when I like first got the list, like Craig played two Anafenza and three Kithian. We've gone, I've gone down on the Legends just because like it's really important to not run into the Legend rule with this deck because you need to just like be able to play your cards so they're giving you white devotion. Like the most important thing about Anafenza is that it costs white white, and if you have a like white card in your hand that you just can't put into play to use your Nykthos, it's a big problem. I, I also like the way Anafenza interacts. With, uh, hanger back. with hanger back walker, yeah. that's just yeah. kind of sweet. You get an, you get like two free mana out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really good there. Um, Wingmate Rock is just. I mean, it's uh, last year I was playing a deck that was entirely in worlds. I was playing a deck that was entirely based on well, play Wingmate. I'll like play guys that let me get a second rock off a of Wingmate Rock, and that'll be the game. <laughs> and this is the same deck. <laughs> just hasn't changed make Wingmate Rock work. It's so right. powerful. Let's take a look at some of the spells in this deck. Uh, Banishing Light, Valor Stance. For Mastery of the Scene, this is a card you've played in other games. I've played decks. Mastery of the Scene yeah. before. It's a good one. Um, uh, Nick Thos and Mastery is just a great interaction. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, normally like a white weenie deck or like a white creature deck, especially a white creature deck that's playing like four and five drops is going to be really bad against a control deck. Because like those, you play Wingman and they're like, okay, Languish. And you're like, well... I guess that's it. Uh, but Mastery lets you just grind that out. You just set your hand aside, play a land every turn, activate Mastery at the end of their turn, and just like see if they can deal with all those tutus. Um, it's really important. Like it's not every game that happens, but it's, it's massively important there. And uh, again, in my last match, I just like against Martin. Like I didn't need to try to figure out like how many guys I could attack with to pressure him before he burned me out. I was able to just like get all my guys on defense play mastery, start manifesting and gaining life, and he could never right. catch up Hide behind me. an archangel yeah. to slow him down, and then, yeah, the life gain from this could be so brutal. Yeah, well, and then this is just some interaction, some removal. Let's, let's take a look at uh, the lands, because this was this is really nice. Sometimes <laughs> we'll go through, like, I'll do this gesture four times to get through the mana base <laughs> right, no, this of is a it. standard just deck. These. This is all. Yeah. One Foundry of the Council, three Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, and 21 Planes. Yeah, and this is the selling point of the deck right here. <laughs> I love basic lands in this format. From Mono Blue Devotion, Burn, and Last PT, and I mean, Last Worlds, I had to play a couple non-basics, but I like having more untapped lands than my opponents, more consistent mana than my opponents. Temples are great, but not having them when other people need to is even better. I, I love the Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, Master of the Unseen interaction, yep. and when everything is all just one color, it just seems it's just so, so easy. seamless. Yep. All right, let's take a quick look through your sideboard, and then we're going to let you get back down to the battlefield. Sure. So Elspeth, High Sentinels of Arashian, Banishing Light, Celestial Flare, and then uh, the next set here. Oh, I guess they want us to talk about these. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Elspeth is um, just, like the way to beat like mid-range decks. It gives you a way to kill Stormbreath Dragon. It uh, is great against Abzan. Just anytime, you, like, the deck is positioned in kind of an aggro, kind of mid-range spot. And sometimes you want to go a little smaller, sometimes you want to go a little bigger. Elspeth's the just easy way to go bigger in a mono-white deck. Uh, High Sentinels is, um, if people are relying on red removal, when you have cards like Anafenza and Hangerback Walker, sometimes it just comes down with five or more toughness. And then, like, they can't kill it, and it takes over very quickly. Also against, like, green-red devotion or dragons or something, it just, like, flies over them and end the game, ends the game very quickly. All right, let's take a look um, at the last at the last few sure, cyborg cards yeah. here. So we can let you go. Glare of Heresy, Revoke Existence, Surge of Righteousness, Tragic Arrogance, and Valor Stance. Where are you bringing in Tragic Arrogance in, in particular? Uh, against, I mean, just like any creature deck, um, especially things like Devotion and Thopters that have, like, a lot of creatures, and some of them are really bad. Um, and then you're just like, okay, well, get rid of your stuff. I, I did the Storm Breath Dragon factor into this uh, card. Well, Storm Breath Dragon was more the three Celestial Flares that we saw in the last page and the Elspeths. But uh, certainly, if it's, like, a red-green Storm Breath type deck, you'll want Tragic Arrogance. But some of the decks that are just, like, removal spells and Storm Breaths, it might not work. Uh, the rest of the sideboard is basically just different removal spells yeah. to tune to whatever you're needing to remove. All right, you're off to a good start with the deck so far. Yep. One match win. Sam Black, Brian David Marshall, signing off from the Tournament Center.